You speak to a world of brut brutal rule and shallow indifference, of arms fairs and reality shows. May the one who came to sit at table with the victimized and excluded disturb our barren peace and call us to another feast where only love may rule. Through Jesus Christ, the bridegroom. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson in the Hebrew scripture is from Isaiah. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place. You subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on this day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Here ends the reading. The Spirit open our hearts to the Lord. We will read the psalm responsibly by half verse. The Lord is my shepherd. I, I shall not be in He makes me lie down in green pastures. And leads me to the still waters. He revives my soul. And, and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they will comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have happened to my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Today is, for, is to the Philippians. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Uodia and I urge Sinke to be the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my royal companion, <coughs> to help these women for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, will suppress, which suppresses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence or if there is anything worthy of praise, 
Think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Here ends the reading. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. as he speaks in parables to help us get a glimpse of the realm of God. The story is full of characters, each representing part of our reality. The king, the son, the guests, the servants. Jesus doesn't give us many clues as to who or what each character represents. One way to interpret the story is to see the king as representing God, and the son as representing Jesus. And we are the guests. God invites us to a feast in honor of his son, the bridegroom of universal love and peace. But we refuse the invitation. We're too busy, too distracted, too wrapped up in our lives to attend the feast. God's servants invite us again, and we lash out with our refusal. God is angry and casts us out. We are no longer invited, no longer worthy of attending the feast. This interpretation is uncomfortable. It describes the realm of God as a place where God rules with wrath and retribution. And that's not the God we imagine from the 23rd Psalm, is it? That's not the God that shepherds us to green pastures and still waters. His parables 
can be seen in so many ways. They're like an onion with many, many, many layers. So let's look at the story another way. Perhaps the most important character in the story is the feast. The feast is God's gift to us. Love, peace, balance, abundance, and so much more. We can't even imagine what goodness awaits. We can't comprehend all that God has to offer. God invites us to an unimaginable experience, and the invitation comes repeatedly. When we choose to refuse the invitation, we choose to close the door to experiencing all that God can show us. Perhaps this is Jesus' point. He's invited us over and over to open our eyes to see the way of love. And like a frustrated parent, Jesus wants to help us see. Like this is the point of the story in the Gospel of Matthew. When Jesus sees that we suffer because we don't know what we're missing, because we don't know what happens because of our choices, he drives his point home with dramatic flair, just as a parent might do. We illustrate with, with a little story. Stories about Frank, who's a family man, a parent who loves his children and wants to help them as much as he can. He is a nurse who works nights in the emergency room in an inner city hospital. On any given night, patients come in who don't make it. He sees that some of them have made choices that lead to their deaths. Like each morning after his shift, Frank returns to his family. And he thinks about this. He thinks about all he has seen, and he is afraid for his children, worried that they might someday make choices that will cause great suffering. And so he talks to them, explaining that he has seen the consequences of bad choices. He says to them, sometimes you might not think, you might think it's just no big deal. You might think, just this one time, I'll do what I want. And his children can't see the point. For them, life is just one big adventure. They go along with their friends, and sometimes they get into a little bit of trouble. Again, Frank talks to them, to no avail. The pattern repeats. Until one day, Frank gets yet one more call that one of his children is in hot water. Again. Frank loses it. He says, you don't know what I know. You have no idea what I've seen. You think this is no big deal, but you don't know. You could be hurt in ways you can't imagine. You could suffer. You could die. And so it is with Jesus. He sees how we ignore God's invitations to listen. He's had it. And he needs to drive the point home. Why? Because he sees our potential. Because he loves us. He sees what we could be if we were to live into our best selves. And so he tells the parable that paints a picture of dire consequences. God is not a God of wrath and destruction. 
But Jesus tells this story to inspire us to live into our highest potential, the soul journey God hopes for, for us. To be our best selves, all we have to do is to be open to what God offers us. The feast. The feast God has prepared is a feast of love, peace, balance, abundance, so much more that we can't even imagine. We don't know what goodness awaits. We are invited to the table, and at the table, we are offered this feast of bounty of good things. Paul speaks of this feast in his letter to the Philippians, saying, God offers us gentleness, truth, justice, purity, peace, love, and more. Paul writes, let your gentleness, gentleness be known to everyone. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. To the people in the midst of war in Israel and Palestine, God extends an invitation to the table, to the feast. It does not matter their beliefs. It does not matter what faith tradition, what religion. There is no request. No request to do anything other than come to the table. Some have accepted this invitation had long talks with my friend Hava, who has family in that region. She knows many people there, both Israelis and Palestinians, who gather frequently to feast in peace. They share sacred bonds of love and have done so for many, many years. It is her prayer, it is my friend Hava's prayer, and my prayer, and the prayer of so many people, that more and more and more will accept the invitation to the feast. In what ways are we invited to the feast? Let's think about our daily lives. Where are there opportunities to let our gentleness be known? What have we learned about God's love that we can act on today? What distracts us from accepting the invitation to God's feast of love and peace? And once we are at the table, what prevents us from feasting and sharing that bounty? There is much to ponder. But there is even more upon which to feast. All we have to do is sit, eat, and absorb the loving nourishment that God offers us again and again. Amen.
us pray for the redeeming of the realm of God in the world, now and always. In the beginning, God, God was. Here and now, God is. In the future, God will be. Creator of earth, sea, and sky, kindle the fire of fire of your spirit within us that we may be bold to heal and defend the earth, and pour your blessing upon Oh my 
Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. forward to reporting back on that for you. Also want to, to uh, you can see uh, all of the other things, but I want to note to you that the Kohala Cares fundraiser in Walker Hall is coming up on the 27th, and if you are interested in tickets to enjoy wonderful food and entertainment for a beautiful cause to help stop food insecurity in Kohala, please let me know. There's links in the email that I send, and also it's, that information is available in face, on Facebook if you're interested. One other note, the next day after the Kohala Cares fundraiser, we will be making kahili in Walker Hall. We are getting close to being done. Please come and join us, even if it's for a few minutes. It would be wonderful to have your company as we work on this beautiful tradition in honor of Alibi. Are there any other announcements this morning? Okay. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. We send special peace to our friends on live stream, always. <laughs> As we enter this time of Holy Communion where we gather to feast at the table, let us say our offertory sentence. We come with offerings of our time, our money, 
our strength, our pleasure in one another's company. All these we bring to God in dedication and for use in the glory of the realm of God. Creator of the universe and giver of life, 
You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation, this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, King of Earth, and of the Source of all that is and that shall be. Father and mother of us all, loving God in whose is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and cup on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever.
All who seek God are welcome at this table.
And the blessing of God, the Creator, the Light, and the Spirit of Truth be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen.